Hey, I'm finally back home and I would love to give you an update on how my trip to Europe was. So this was my first Euro summer trip and it was incredible. I traveled with three friends, one friend from uni and two friends, a couple that I actually met through a common friend that went to New York for the first time with me in my high school years. And it was my first Euro summer. We first started at Rome and Rome was incredibly hot. So I have never traveled to that part of the country, continent, European continent during those days. So I had no clue how hot that was going to be. As soon as I landed, I went to my friend Luca's accommodation, which was an apartment from a friend of ours, Jean. And Jean's apartment was incredibly beautiful. I arrived around 2 a.m. So I couldn't check in to my direct accommodation yet. So I spent the night over there with him and Jean. I had very little sleep, arrived at 2 a.m. By 6 a.m. we were up and getting ready and dressed to go to the Fontana di Trevi, Paternon and Coliseum. So Lucas wanted a hair dryer and we went on a whole mission to try to find that thing. We wanted something small and still affordable, something that he could carry around throughout the whole trip without occupying too much space on his luggage or being too heavy, something cheap and something that was going to be functional enough. So we did a whole route, starting by the Fontana di Trevi, which was incredible. From there, we headed to Parternon, which was like five to 10 minutes away by foot. And it was incredible as well. I couldn't like realize that we were in front of it because it is a beautiful building but it's not very, let's say, separated from the tourists and the people who are walking around. So it was really shocking that that place is still up and running and kind of like open for visitation until nowadays without that much protection. So the place is beautiful, definitely worth a visit, worth a check. And from there, we hop from store to store, starting by Sephora, a few malls, and trying to find like this, God damn it, hair dryer. We didn't find in any of the stores, all the hair dryers were like 200 euros minimum. So we went to this train station, which was re recommended to us by one of the girls that worked at Sephora. And in there, we found a store that sold very small hair dryers for a really affordable price and that were really powerful and usable throughout this whole trip. We got a hair dryer for like 20 euros. And from there, we decided to keep walking and keep adventuring ourselves, even though it was so hot, like incredibly hot. Uh, and we headed to the Coliseum. So we checked it out from the outside. Uh, we didn't have that much time in the city to be like spending time in each one of the attractions, discovering and so on. So we checked out from the external side and it was incredible. That building, it's massive like I was so shocked to see that and how magnificent it was and how well kept that thing was we explored walked all around suffered with heat and then we stopped for a delicious brunch in a place that I found on Google Maps and this place didn't have a lot of options so I wasn't expecting much I just wanted an Italian espresso to see like what the deal was and a simple sandwich just to kind of like keep me up and running and with energy enough to at least walk back home or do something else from there. So as soon as we ordered, the sandwich was massive. It was a focaccia sandwich filled with pistachio cream and mortadella, the Bologna. Uh, and the mortadella was so fresh and the pistachio cream wasn't very strong. So it was kind of like more like a creamy and soft taste that added positively to the taste. So it was incredible and I absolutely loved it. We were already dying with that heat and drinking coffee didn't help either. So we went back to the accommodation, met up with our friends, Fernanda and Victor. And from there, we decided to go to the Vatican. And the Vatican was a little less than I expected, but it was more like a square. And that square was filled with a lot of very religious buildings, but still incredibly beautiful, well taken care of, and definitely worth to visit. After this whole tour, we took a chance to eat some Italian pizza, my first real Italian pizza, and it was amazing. We had one margarita and one Diavola pizza, plus a huge bottle of white wine to kind of refresh us and keep us going throughout the day, which was incredible and a definitely must-have combination during the Italian summer. From the second day, I took a chance to go running 
So that was something that I really wanted to keep doing and not stop throughout my process. I've been documenting my running journey for you guys here for so long. And I wanted to keep that going, keep that rolling and keep myself motivated to continue running, especially when I came back home now. So I took a chance to wake up around 6 a.m., went out for a run and ran for my first 11 kilometers. That was incredible. I got to see so many beautiful spots, so many beautiful parks, so many restaurants, so many coffee shops. Got to really explore the city and feel like a local a little bit for doing that kind of unusual activity for a tourist. And it was amazing. I was, I'm really happy I took the chance to do it because it was my first real long run without having the obligation of fulfilling a time, fulfilling a place, just enjoying the run for itself. To close up the whole Rome scenery and chapter, the most amazing thing that we have done there, besides seeing the Fontana di Trevi, Parthenon, Coliseum, my run, and getting to eat amazing food and drink amazing, incredible wine, we also took a chance to do a cooking experience with Romo Chef. So that was an invitation that I got via Instagram. And I was like, yeah, why not? Let's do this. So I went there with Lucas and it was super fun. We had this teacher called Aria who taught us how to do both tagliatelle pasta. I did carbonara pasta. Lucas did the cacio pepe. Plus, we learned how to do aperol spritz. So that was incredible, super delicious, super refreshing. And I have to say much better than Campari spritz. Which I'm headed to the Amalfi Coast, which was my favorite part of this whole trip. The place was incredible. Like as soon as your train is approaching that Amalfi Coast region, you see so many amazing scenery that is just, it is mind blowing. We stayed in a little city just out of Sorrento called Castello, Castellamari di Stabia. And this little city was, had a very family vibe, not so touristy. So we got to experiment a lot with the Italian vibe and food and kind of traditions over there. And also save a little bit in terms of the accommodation pricing, because if you stay in Amalfi, Sorrento, Positano or Capri, the prices are maxed for accommodation. So most of our trip was spent in that particular location. So we spent a lot of the time in Sorrento, really enjoying the beach clubs, swimming. I learned how to swim a little bit and enjoying the food. Uh, tanning and just talking about trends and stuff while drinking wine. Plus, a high peak and something that was the highlight of the trip was our boat tour to Positano. So I spent a day between Positano, Capri and Amalfi, just enjoying ourselves, drinking a lot of beer, wine and Prosecco, uh, and swimming, just kind of tanning, swimming, listening to cool music and enjoying ourselves. So that was incredible. We paid 80 euros per person for a Woo! private tour. And it was like 10 out of 10, definitely an unforgettable experience. And if you ever get to go there, I'll link below the experience and the name of the tour provider so you can check it out because it's definitely so worth it. In the very last day, we spent the whole day in Capri, which was one of my favorite cities in the Amalfi Coast. So that was, that's such like a special city, but definitely takes a lot of budget. You need to allocate budget because the entrance for the beach club itself, we paid like, I'm not sure if it's a hundred euros or 150 euros just to get in a beach club and have a spot to sit by the sea. So that is definitely very overpriced. I do recommend you to check it out before, try to book before, save your spot so you don't have to spend as much as we did in there. But it's definitely such a beautiful experience, such a beautiful scenery. The color of the water is incredible. We ate some good food. We had like a credit voucher in the ticket that we paid to get in the, the beach club to spend in the restaurant. So that was incredible. I definitely recommend going there like 100 out of 10, not for shopping, not for all that kind of like phony stuff but to enjoy the scenery, the nature and the water. After that, Lucas and I took a train to Milan and in Milan, we had the most incredible view of the Duomo di Milano, which is the main cathedral and the main attraction of the city for tourists. And we had some drinks, a little bit of food in a super overpriced location, but definitely worth it if you're just going there for the views and just have like a night there and really want to enjoy yourself. So. That was incredible. And from there, we headed to Madrid. In Madrid, we had a terrible experience with our Airbnb. The Airbnb was filled with cockroaches. We didn't have Wi-Fi. They didn't care enough to come fix it. They didn't care enough to send someone 
to throw a product or to kind of like clean up enough so we can get could got rid of those cockroaches so that was kind of like a very better experience that i'm still dealing with right now with booking.com so at least we got to enjoy a lot of the good restaurants we ate at la casa which was an incredible prime experience for food i ended up finding that by luck i was trying to find like top rated uh close to five stars location so that was great it was incredibly cheap we had like a five star service the servers were really fun really helpful really down to earth and kind of like down to talk to us about the food about life in the air and kind of like try to connect with us a little bit like relate to us let's say and from there uh it was too hot so we didn't spend a lot of time walking around so in the second night in my last night during this trip we went to a super special restaurant called bishop palo and bishop palo just won the, their first michelin nomination and it's such a, an incredible and simple experience it has like a tasting menu that costs 40 euros per person so anything besides that that you're gonna pay for is definitely the wine so it's super worth it to go and it's definitely an incredible experience hope you enjoyed listening about my experience and hope this helps you to prep for your next european trip and looking forward to sharing more trips in my running journey with you.